Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. And today the title is How I Lost Five Inches in My Waist in Just Eight Weeks and I'm Keeping It Off. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. We're making it possible for busy women to sculpt and tone in just 15 minutes a day. It's either great for beginners or stackable for advanced. So whether you're looking for a women's complete home gym or free routine for consistency or full guided workouts in our app, we've got you covered to really unleash your empowered self and step back into your confidence. So you can visit our store, bootybands.com and subscribe so you get notifications for every episode that drops every Sunday. So today we're interviewing Alyssa and she won our last Booty Bands and Barbells Challenge and her story is absolutely amazing. The simple small steps that she takes and how she's going to reveal on our podcast today so that way we are able to also lose the five inches or more and we're able to also keep it off. Let's get started. So yeah, tell me a little bit about where you were at before Booty Bands. So before I joined Booty Bands and Barbells, I was really just kind of trying to get my footing back. Over 10 years in my journey, kind of plateaued, I kind of got to my lowest and then gained weight and just got stuck yo-yoing back between the same 20 pounds. And I just wanted to try something different. Um, And as a woman... I always kind of shied away from lifting barbells and everything just because that's just what I've known as it to be is just to gain muscle. And my goal was to just always lose fat. So I'm like, I'll get there in my journey, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, But then I came across your ad on Instagram and Facebook. I really saw it like everywhere. So I'm like, first, that's a sign. (laughs) And second, I was just like, well, you know, this is really saying it's proven to to help women really lose this muscle and sorry, gain muscle and lose this fat. So maybe this is something that you need to try out because it's different than what you've done before. And then that's kind of how I joined, bought the barbells and then learned about all the other awesome programs. Yeah, that's awesome. I like what you said there. So initially you were thinking, I want to lose the fat. And then after I lose the fat, then I'll gain the muscle, right? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of women, in fact, that I speak to that, that are either haven't joined booty bands or maybe in booty bands, that's their mindset. I think that for whatever reason, we think that. And for whatever reason, I don't know, we don't think about putting them together. Muscle is what burns fat. And so when we put them together and we build muscle and burn fat, it, it's, it, it amplifies what you're doing. I mean, clearly it's amplifying. So now that you're in the booty bands and barbells program, tell us a little bit about what it's been like maybe the last couple of months. So the last couple of months, I'll be honest, I always describe it as life changing. Um, reason being three different factors kind of contributed to me changing holistically. And I'm still a work in progress. However, Over the past few months, I've always kind of been focused on, like I said, losing weight, losing weight, losing weight, cardio. That was just my mindset for the last 10 years. Um, That's just what I always knew worked for losing weight. Never really bothered to explore beyond that. I kind of started the workout. I think we were maybe five days into the September challenge and you were like, go ahead, like you can join it. So I hopped on the opportunity and really just followed your program consistently and really like didn't allow myself to you know find an excuse not to participate so within the last few months I'll start with my mind like yes we all go through mental health we all don't like to talk about it however this program has taught me that that's important maybe if I don't like to talk about it I can journal about it you know I can talk about what I feel comfortable about and then use tools to kind of work through everything else um nutrition wise really just like you said not having that yes you can do this no you can't do that you really gave us the guidance the macros the real nutrition whole grain fibers just kind of all the tools that you need to be successful you didn't bind me to like a amount of calories I had to eat or a certain grams or percentage I had to get to it was like here's your tools you know you have to figure out how to use these tools and make them work for your body the best so doing that with my nutrition I just paid attention to how my body felt and after I ate and how my like chronic conditions didn't flare up as much by eating that way And then lastly, the working out, which is my favorite, 
It's just really the body has changed. The pain and those things has reduced so tremendously by me following the programs, doing it consistently as scheduled, really focusing on the form and just staying committed to it. Um, I do get my rest days, which is something I really freed away from before. So just really sticking to the program, really listening to it and running things by you and the accountability program and asking those questions here and there to fine tune everything, I think really just brought everything together. Wow, it's interesting. And um, thanks for sharing that. It, what I what I heard too is that you were just kind of a the cardio queen beforehand. Tell us about what it was like being on cardio versus now using resistance. So being on cardio, it was very painful um, because I would get on the elliptical. I'm the person that you see in the meme, zero resistance, going fast, going 10 miles per hour. And like, you know, looking back now, I really wasn't doing anything, but increasing my stress hormones and really debilitating me from losing the weight that I needed to do. I was just, oh, how many calories can I burn? How many calories can I burn? I wasn't focused on what part of my body am I working out, listening to my muscle form memory, like you taught us, really just tuning into my body. I was just a hundred percent focused on calorie burn. And that was really what, you know, my I lost the weight and my body changed, but it did the shape didn't change. It was more so just like losing the weight, losing the weight. And I'm sure also with that lost a lot of muscle. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So I was actually looking over your results um, since you've started this program. I wanted to go over those. So as I pull it up, uh, initially you started with a waist of 38 inches. And now your last weigh-in, that was this last Friday, you are sitting at 33 inches, you guys. Oh my gosh, that's a total of five yes. inches she has lost in her waist. And listen to this. This has only been, this is, uh, let's see. So she, you started your first measurements were in September and now it is November. So it's just two months, right? Is that just two months? September, yep. October, Eight November? Weeks. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is I, I, it's just insane to just see this, this transformation. And now you could hear about how, yeah, being just on cardio, thinking in your mind of just, I want to lose that weight and then I'll gain the muscle. But her body is just completely transforming. Um, we can even look at her BMI. So she initially was sitting at 35.7. Now she's at 32.7. Wow. Um, you have a scale that tracks like your body muscle. And I love that because I, I see so often that uh, so many women are just weighing themselves on a scale and they're just tracking just one number. Tell us what it is for you instead of just tracking just your weight, what it is like tracking more measurements and, and your body, your muscle percentage. It is seeing the results. Um, I really, really, really have gone from focusing on the pound as far as the numbers on the scale and really all the other metrics, right? Because some of them tie into the macros that we eat every day and really just seeing the inches. Like, I'll be honest with you, I've never consistently measured my waist. I've had a scale before that measured BMI and fat and water, but I never really paid attention to it or tracked it. Now that I'm actually paying attention to that, on the weeks where I don't lose as much weight as I felt I should have lost, and then I go ahead and measure myself and I've lost a whole inch on my waist, that nine scale victory literally carries me through my next week. Like, you know, it's okay that the scale did not go down two pounds like you had your, you know, your goal was, but really you were able to consistently stick to your goal and kind of do what you needed to do and you still had a result. And then my BMI, um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with it, but I was a child the first time I saw obese written on like my doctor record and I related that to something like scary or unknown, you get what I'm saying? Now, at when I first started, I was kind of borderline still 
morbidly obese and now that my bmi has gone lower i am falling back into the obese category but getting very close to where i should be for a healthy bmi and those things like that go all the way back to my childhood that i may not have thought of until now when i actually started tracking it make a really huge difference for me oh my gosh you guys this is just Phenomenal. I, I honestly could start crying because I just, I, I've cold chills everywhere. Just like hearing your transformation and how many other women are experiencing this transformation as well, that how they are initially are starting and they're trying so hard, like eating healthy and the cardio and trying to lose the weight and they're eating as little as possible and they're trying everything. They feel like they're having to starve themselves to get there. So listen, let me ask you about more on the nutrition side. Tell us what it's been like, the shift for you from what you were doing before to what you're doing now and how you've lost five inches in your waist in just eight weeks. I have tracked my nutrition, but really stopped focusing on my calories. First time in the whole 11 years that I have holistically done that. Um, you and I both know I use an app to kind of track my calories just so I can know what macronutrients are and things that don't necessarily have a nutrition label. Um, and really just focusing on how many fat grams I stay near a day or how much protein I'm sticking in because making sure you get that in every meal has to be intentional for me at this point. I'm still, you know, going from diet into habit to lifestyle transition. And before I would just like, oh, this has protein in it, I would eat it. Now I say, well, this has protein in it, but how much fat does it have in it? How much sugar does it have in it? Is it really healthy or are you just using this protein as excuse to eat this? So really kind of focusing on the nutrition holistically instead of just two points of it, like knowing that low fat or sugar free doesn't necessarily always mean it's good for you. And actually looking into the ingredients, maybe trying to pronounce them all, you know, little fun things like that. But I really put focus and intention into that now as opposed to before I just said, oh, well, this might be a hundred calorie snack cookie, but it's only hundred calories. So you can eat it. And then being mad at myself at the end of the week when I didn't lose any weight. So, you know, kind of sticking to the nutrition, forgiving myself when I do eat that cookie, but also being mindful that, you know, it's not the most nutritious thing to put in your body. So somebody could look at you and be like, okay, she's lost five inches in her waist. She has to be eating nothing but fruits and vegetables. Can you tell us a little bit about having to think like you've got to be extremely strict? Do you ever kind of lean a little bit? And when you do, like, what's your focus? Like, if you kind of have a little bit of a mess up meal, what's something that still is your strong focus there? Absolutely. Um, something that's really my strong focus is the making sure I have all the macros in the meal and that it still has a lot of protein. And kind of, I'll give you an example, weighing on Fridays. I love that you have us weighing on Fridays because you go into the weekend and that's when you're most likely to slip up, right? You spend time with your family, friends and everything like that. I'll go out and I'll go to Olive Garden and I love their shrimp scampi. However, instead of me getting the pasta, I'll substitute it for broccoli and I'll still get my shrimp scampi. I'll still have all the flavorful you know, satisfaction and cravings that I wanted. However, I was mindful and didn't get the pasta and made the healthier choice of the broccoli. So although like the garlic butter probably isn't the healthiest choice, I chose to eat it on my way in day and I still substituted the broccoli for the pasta. So I still got my nutrition in while also being able to enjoy time out at a restaurant and not feel guilty about it. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for sharing that because I think some people, when they think of weight loss, they think, oh man, I've got to, I've got to follow the most strict program. And I just got done doing a, a podcast recently with Angela. She was, she was a previous a winner to one of our challenges. And she has said that she had joined uh, these programs before that were so strict that even fruit wasn't yes. accepted. And when we, when we go on these really strict programs, you guys, what it does is it creates this all in all out mindset that it's either we're on a diet and this diet is like next level extreme or we're off a diet. And so what I really liked that you mentioned here on this podcast today is talking about lifestyle and that you can still go out to Olive Garden and go enjoy a meal with your family and get your shrimp scampi, but you're making a substitution that allows more fiber into your item. 
and you're still dropping weight. So you're telling me you had shrimp scampi and you were still able to lose five inches in your waistline in eight weeks. That is absolutely accurate. And that's what I want women to know is that calorie counting is, I don't know who came up with it. For a woman, we just said, cool, I'll just go ahead and cut all of the calories as low as possible. And I'm only going to eat my favorite calories. And that completely shifted our macros. We weren't getting enough protein in. We weren't getting enough fiber in. We weren't getting enough of our healthy fats. It made it just, it, made, it literally, this is what it is. You guys listen, this is how a female mind works. And maybe it worked for males. It does not work for females. And this is why if we had a hundred calorie of a chocolate glazed donut, that's like our favorite pastry. And we can possibly imagine it's only a hundred calories. Okay. And then we have, let's say a protein salad, same hundred calories. And we sat there and we're like, okay, if we're thinking about calories and we get to just choose a hundred or a hundred, it's the same thing. We're of course going to go for the donut. Of course we're like, of course I'm going to enjoy this donut of a hundred calories. When in reality, you have to ask yourself, does the donut and the salad offer the same results? Right. And I think that's the biggest thing mm. I've really seen in you, Alyssa, <laughs> is that that you have been able to up your protein, you've been upping your fiber, even though you haven't been eating like this absolute strict bikini competitor plan, you're still, your, your body is saying yes, yes. And every Friday when you send those measurements in, it's like, yep, I'm here. Yep. This is what I need. And it's like, the body is now speaking to us. It's less of me telling you what to do. It's me seeing what your body is telling you. And the second it says, oh, I'm stopping, then it's like, oh, okay, let's figure out what just, what, what, we, what were you eating and what little tweaks we need to do. But our body is so smart. It's either working for us or against us. So tell us a little bit about that, mm -hmm. um, about what you think now about your body working with you now. What does that feel like? I learned tracking calories and Weight Watchers when I was like 10 years old. I'm 31. So it that was my mindset, like you said. And I never really focused on the fiber. I never focused on the impact that it had on my body when I didn't eat it versus when I do eat it. Um, I never really understood how my mindset impacted my weight loss and how my body feels and how I go into the day and really kind of honing in on that and really understanding that you need a carb in your meal, but are you going to choose, like you said, a white potato or a sweet potato? And if you do choose a sweet potato, are you going to load it with butter and brown sugar or are you just going to sprinkle a little cinnamon on it and use your imagination to get your satisfaction? So those are the things that I feel like are shrinking my stomach um, before I would justify like, oh, you can just have the potato, just eat half of it. And for me and my body, that didn't work. It worked for my mind, but it didn't work for my body. So I really have put focus into combining the two and really learning how my body responds to the different types of nutrition. And that really is what I feel has made the difference in my belly and how it's kind of getting flatter and the inches are going away. Yeah, you mentioned something there that was about mindset. And I thought this was a, a great segue to go into that for a moment. So tell us a little bit about the mindset. And just if somebody's listening on this call and they are struggling with mindset, tell us what you were like before. What were some shifts that that really impacted you? I was in a place in my life where I was just super busy, on go all the time, thought that I was taking time out for myself, but never really was. Um, traveling every weekend, two and a half hours, sometimes two, three times a week, um, just really working out but not with any intent just throwing in a few minutes a day just to say I worked out and not really having any system structure or consistency um kind of since then I have changed that I'm a lot less panicky and all over the place I don't feel like I'm living in a chaotic state um there are days obviously where things happen that you can't avoid that's has to be acceptable it's, it's kind of like inevitable at the same time but having like a plan and a structured 
system as to how I'm going to get to my goals and kind of reminding myself that my big goal is that I want to live a happy and healthier life. I really take my time to plan out those days, forgive myself if I don't get everything done, make sure I take that and make plans to get it done later on instead of procrastinating or just giving up because I forgot one thing or I made a mistake or I missed one workout. So really, I think the the biggest answer to this is really learning you know, to going from being so hard on myself to saying you have to get everything done to being really gentle and forgiving and realizing that if you want to get everything done, here's the steps you have to take to get there and you're more likely to meet your goal. Oh, and that's so different than I feel like the weight loss industry, the weight loss industry is so much like, oh, you ate something bad. Oh, like it, it, I don't, I think it, I don't know if it's just like the, the programs or just I don't know. Where do you think that came from? Where do you think it came from that we were just constantly in this like diet world of stress and chaos and guilt and shame I feel it comes from like culture and background right um and it it, for everybody it might resonate with something different but you know it's just like if you do something bad it could it could cause either a very small thing to happen or it could trickle down into a catastrophe so really just learning how to measure that and you know, really, I feel like it's just they don't want to give you permission to make a mistake or be imperfect, because then they feel like you will use that as an excuse to not stick towards your goal. When in reality, it should really be, you know, here's the goal. The goal is for you to be great. We don't want you to be perfect. We want you to focus on that progress and the end goal and, you know, learn yourself along the way. Not like here's the thing that you're going to need to stick to every day for the rest of your life if you want to be healthy. Um, for example, when you go into the doctor pre-diabetic at 20 years old and they're like, well, you just need to cut all the sugars and carbs and your knees hurt because you're overweight and you know, you have all these conditions because you know, you just eat too much sugar and fat. And this, you know, that's not really what it is. And it's not really the best way to help people improve their health but it takes you know coming across people like you and programs like this that really you know have that background education really care from the heart to really help you understand it oh that's that's true I I I love that you mentioned heart earlier about how that's how you want to do is just spread your heart out to the world and I I I really resonated with that and and you're love is always going to win. You're only in two vibrations, love or fear, and love is always going to win. So thank you for sharing that. So if somebody's listening on this right now, and they're just saying, man, I would love to lose five inches in my waist. What would be something that you would, if you had a friend just sitting down next to you, where would you guide her? What would you recommend? I would tell them to really kind of sit down, talk to yourself and focus on you. Um, in smaller words that can be said as, you know, really sit down and think what you want. You you really want to lose these five inches, you know, all that takes is you kind of giving yourself 15, 20 minutes a day and making a few extra promises to yourself and really just starting there and, you know, figuring out how it works. It, it only takes you starting to get there you don't have to win you don't have to be the best at it you don't have to be perfect but all you have to do is take that first step and once you take that first step you'll feel so much better and it'll just help you stay committed and you know really 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 focus on what your goals and priorities are yeah I I like that you mentioned that instead of like talking about maybe diet or workouts you know you were it was just like start with you I thought that was really cool because I think we so often will lose sight of taking care of ourselves because we're so focused on taking care of other people and so I like that you said that that really really resonates I think with a lot of people there so again you heard it from Alyssa and if you guys liked Alyssa and and what she's saying here, she's actually in the Booty Bands and Barbells community actually doing our current challenge. So if you would like to connect with her, she's getting booty buddies in, in the uh, program right now. And come into the free Facebook group, join the group of women, and maybe that first step of what Alyssa was just saying of taking that time for you, maybe it's just joining the Facebook group for you to be able to connect back to you. If you haven't done something so far this month, this year for you, do just that. Maybe that could be your first step. 
So we're all here to support you. I'm going to go ahead and drop in the comments down below the Facebook group link so you can come check us out. Um, we are real people. We are real women we're getting real results. And we're here to support you through that. So uh, thank you so much, Alyssa, for your time. Thank you for your, your willingness to jump on here. This is your first podcast. What did you think so far? I absolutely loved it. <laughs> Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.